Hi, Paul Beckwith, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, Department of Geography, University of Ottawa, Carleton University, Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. So, I'm talking about feedbacks in the Arctic, the accelerating effects of Arctic feedbacks. Again, I highly recommend reading this book, A Farewell to Ice. Peter spent, has spent a lifetime exploring under the Arctic Ocean, on the ice, above the Arctic Ocean, in all aspects, in numerous field trips. Um, up there, he studied the heck out of it, all kinds of observations and data collected. Forget about models, IPCC models, forget about, uh, you know, they're just, I mean, what are you going to believe, a model or field observations? Um, you know, it's, it's a model if you're the IPCC and if you're a lot of scientists these days, and it's absurd. You know, the data wins always. So, we talked about some of the powerful feedbacks, and Greenland, of course, massive ice sheets. The melting is increasing. The ice sheets are getting darker. There's meltwater ponds on them. They're, they're um, sliding quicker and quicker. Um, creating huge ice shelves that then break off um, and uh, provide a lot of fresh water on the surface of the, of the um, Arctic. And, uh, right, uh, also has a big impact on raising uh, sea level. Okay, so this is, a, this is a very strong feedback which is occurring. Uh, the next one is the Arctic rivers. Okay, so this is related to the ice albedo. You know, the Arctic is getting a series uh, NASA um, instrument on a satellite measured the average albedo in the Arctic region to be 0.52 or 52 percent. This was decades ago. The number now is 48 percent. Okay, so the Arctic is, is reflecting less and less light. It's getting darker and darker. It's absorbing more and more energy from the sun, so it's heating up by itself more and more and more. So therefore, there's less heat going there from the equator, and the jet streams slow down and become wavier, and da 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 da. Okay, so the sea ice that is declining means that there's a lot of open water around, and that open water is heating up. There's also less snow cover on the surrounding land, so there's more exposed permafrost, which is heating up. So all of that heating up, when we have the melt, the snow melt, all the rivers are heading north into the Arctic Ocean. These rivers in Siberia and Alaska and Canada, the Mackenzie River in Canada, they're all bringing warmer and warmer water. There's also more and more rainfall up in the Arctic region, which ends up in these watersheds, which then flows in these rivers. So the flow rates are greatly increasing of rivers in the Arctic that are bringing warm, fresh water into the region in the summer, and this is greatly accelerating the ice melt in that region. Right? Another very strong feedback. The permafrost regions are having more fires. The boreal forests are stressed by very warm temperatures, very dry conditions. The pest, the emerald ash borer, pine beetle infestations, they're basically tinder boxes, and they're going. The fire season is greatly extended. All of that ash that goes up aloft from the burning wood, from the fires, very intense, very hot fires, is sending little soot particles up into the air. Those soot particles are traveling, they're being carried up because the jet streams are wavier, going right up to the North Pole, in fact, below the equator, as I pointed out in previous videos, those, that ash is spread at all different latitudes. A lot of it's going up into the Arctic, 
and it's going on the sea ice and it's going on Greenland and it's going on the snow cover and you know if you have snow here you know 90% albedo you get a black uh, clump here what does it do it absorbs solar energy it heats up it melts all the snow around you know it starts sinking downwards over time it creates a crevice here crevice fills with water you get bacteria working on there um, you get nutrients you know from the clump you get plants starting to grow you know and, and they can do this all over the place on the ice for example on Greenland or on the sea ice and they can make the ice look bluish or pinkish or greenish right they make it darker they they drop the albedo and uh, you know, you know this happens on your driveway. You got an open pair, you know, as the snow is covering your driveway and you get an open area that's of black asphalt, the sun comes on it, that black area spreads like crazy, right? As the snow melts quicker around it. Okay, so black carbon has a huge impact on lowering the albedo of the Arctic, greatly increasing the temperature, Arctic temperature amplification. Okay, ocean acidification is another issue. If you have an Arctic Ocean covered with, covered with ice, okay, it acts as a continental climate, okay, as opposed to a maritime climate. You know, as the, there's less and less ice in the summers, from higher, faster and faster melt, we're turning into that maritime climate, a lot moister climate, temperatures not as low, <coughs> temperatures greatly moderate. Okay, um, CO2 in the air, the oceans absorb about 41% of the CO2 that goes up into the atmosphere. So you drive your SUV down the road, the CO2 is pumping out of your tailpipe, but 41% of that goes into the ocean as food for phytoplankton. And, and uh, it also makes the ocean more acidic. Okay, now the oceans are warming, so they don't want all that CO2, right? So in about 30 years, that number has gone down to 40%. Doesn't seem like a small drop, but it's averaged over the oceans. <coughs> it's a huge drop. Okay, the sink of the oceans is weakening. That means more of the CO2 will be staying in the atmosphere. This is another, this is a problem, right? Now the CO, now when you have the ocean covered in sea ice, you don't have that atmosphere liquid interface. The ice is in between. So the oceans don't get as acidic underneath the ice. Now as the ice is backing off and declining, you have more and more open ocean. So you get more and more absorption of CO2 there. So the ocean acidification is going up a lot in the Arctic. Okay, and uh, the ocean, so the pH, open ocean, 8.2, basic. 30 years, dropped to 8.05. Doesn't seem like a big drop, right? This is pH, but pH is an exponential, log well, it's a logarithmic scale. So a pH of six, so the pH, the smaller the pH, the more, the, the more acidic you get. Okay, so the pH is dropping in the ocean, it's becoming more acidic. A drop from say eight to seven would be a 10 times increase in hydrogen ions or acidity, which is a pH is a measure of that basically. Okay, so this drop is about an increase of acidity in the ocean of about 30%. You get down to numbers about 7.9, 7.8, and basically the phytoplankton, the coccolithophores, which build a calcium carbonate backbone, well, aren't able to do that. Um, pteropods and things can't form proper shells, and they're, you just get a mush of jello or whatever. I mean, the organism is totally different, and the biological pump uh, slows down. Okay? Geez, I'm just a bundle of joy here. You're probably wondering why this is here. 
This is for, uh, I'm in a rough neighborhood, so this is for, uh, this is for self-defense, uh, you know, if any, any, uh, you know, any hoodlums come in uh, while I'm giving my lecture. So ocean acidification, another big feedback. Methane deserves uh, an entire video by itself. We're talking about methane from the terrestrial permafrost, which is coming up, and, you know, sort of at a at rapidly increasing pace. But the main concern is the, the, the methane burst, or the huge bubble coming up from the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, for example. I will talk about that in another video. This is the mother of all feedbacks. And these other things that Peter didn't discuss yet, or at least I haven't read that far. You know, well, the algae I talked about a bit with black carbon, but because the ice, if, the, if you have thick ice, snow on it, you don't get much sunlight going into the water below. So you don't have a lot of phytoplankton. You know, as the ice gets thinner and thinner, it becomes much more transparent, you get a lot more light going down, you get the algae then coating the bottom of the ice, growing on the ice, and then that darkens the albedo. <coughs> okay, so this is another feedback. Of course, the jet stream waviness, slowing down, becoming wavier. When you think about it, you know, we're not talking about jet streams from an extreme weather point of view, but if this is a jet stream moving around, the hot air is getting up here, the cold air is getting up here. Now we have a much higher waviness. You know, the hot air goes all the way up to the North Pole, the cold air all goes all the way down to Florida. Anytime hot air is going up north, of course the Arctic's warming. Anytime cold air is going down south, of course the Arctic's warming, right? So this equalizes temperature with latitude. <coughs> Very strong feedback. Okay, the ocean currents obviously do the same thing. As they slow, they penetrate, they can penetrate further north. So there was a paper recently about the stratification in the Arctic. Okay, so the Arctic waters, you have the surface, then you have a layer up down, about 150 meters deep, which is the surface water. It's the Arctic polar water or whatever. Okay, it's cold water, it's, a, it's close to the freezing point. Then you can go down to about 900 meters, and, and this is the Atlantic water, derived from the Atlantic, and it's, it's warmer. Okay, this is warmer water. It's very salty, so it's warm and salty, it's denser. This is <coughs> cold, but fresher, so it's lighter. And then you go down to the seafloor with, uh, co with cold water again. The deep, the deep uh, polar water. Over the continental shelves that are only, you know, up to about 100 meters, you're just going to have this one layer of water. Okay, so what's happened is, is as the ocean currents are slowing and as we have exposed open water here, this water, Atlantic water, has been pushing up to the surface. Okay, which is, uh, you know, another very... Um, concerning situation. So I'm going to talk about methane, but I need a whole video to talk about it, so I'll do that. So, so uh, I want to say that, you know, I've had a number of donations on my website, paulbeckwith.net. I want to thank everybody um, for, you know, helping that have helped and I want to encourage people that haven't to, you know, watch 10 of my videos and kick, kick a few dollars uh, in a donation to my website to support this work because um, I do get some money from teaching the courses but that's, that's it right now and the odd contract and stuff but it's still basically poverty line um, income which is, which is fine. Um, you know, um, I've got some ideas, you know, I, I need to get my act together and get, get a book and stuff like that. But anyway, that's all fun stuff to come. So check out my website, paulbeckwith.net. Thank you for your support.